There were two high school teams playing in a football game. After the game was over, there was an interview by the local sports channel, and they interviewed the winning coach. And the thing that the reporter brought out was that you use the same play on every play, and you won the game. So the question was, what was the brain behind using the same play at every down? And this is what he said because the other team had a weakness. So there was no need to call five and six plays because the one play that was being called, the other team couldn't handle it. And as I thought about that, I thought about us this morning. I thought about us as believers. What is the one play Satan is still using against you? One of the challenges I have taken on myself, I can't tell you this came from heaven, but I've taken it on. I want to make Satan work. A lot of us don't give him a chance to work because he beats us with the same old thing all the time. The same thing all the time. He, he nor his kingdom have to do much to deal with us because we have been having the same weakness for the last 12 years. We've had the same weight for the last five years. We have the same issue we've had since King Hatchet was a knife. So if we were to interview anyone from the kingdom of darkness, and we were to call your name, what would they say? Would they need new plays? Or would the same old thing work? Hebrews tells us, let us lay aside every weight as an incumbent, and every sin which we sets us. I want you to think of the word besetting in this sense. If you ever watch a cowboy and Indian movie, what's the attack format of the Indian? The Indians surround you. The Indians are going to come out, firing the guns, and then they're going to encircle you. That's exactly what the word is set. That which will encircle you. And the idea there is, it encircles you because it traps you. So the Bible tells us the list that every made under sin, which is encircling us, and it is going to trap us in the middle. Now my question to you this morning is, what has been your consistent defeating point? What has been that point? Let me suggest some of these things to you. Some people are so thin-skinned that it doesn't matter what you do or not do, they're going to be offended. Mm -hmm. I've got news for you. That is the height of maturity. You may not like what I'm saying, but I'm telling you the truth. A thin-skinned person is indicative of the fact that they're not growing. Now, you, this is reality here now. This reality check for moments of God place it. Some people are so overly sensitive that they make a bad tooth look bad. <laughs> and that's what's killing some of you. So it doesn't take much to get you off course. It doesn't take much at all. For some of you, fear kills you. You fear everything. You fear your children are going to get killed around the long pole. You fear that you're going to have cancer. You fear that you're going to have tuberculosis. You fear that the earth is going to drop off the axis and we're going to fall into the midst of the abyss and there'll be no one to rescue us. Fear. If you search the scriptures, the word fear is used very strategically, especially by the Lord Jesus. Fear. What are you afraid of? You know what else is killing a lot of us? Pleasure. It's all about me. That's what I want to do. That's what I enjoy doing. And I thought about it. I said, Lord, have mercy on us. Because most of us are being tripped up by the same thing over and over and over. Some of you are being tripped up because you have no God on your lip. Let me tell you what I've learned in my experience. People have no God on their lip. It doesn't matter what you bring to the table, 
nobody regards you. I don't care if you bring diamonds and jewels and silver and gold. No control on your lip, nobody regards you. And some of us have been tripped up by that for we were born and still being tripped up by that today. These are the simple things. And you know what hit me this morning? As I was getting this, I said, Lord, God of mercy, give us spiritual eyes to see beyond the physical. And a lot of us don't have spiritual eyes. We don't have spiritual sight. And I'm not saying that we are unconverted, you know. Because you know what Second Peter says? When you forget these things, you can't see afar off. So you have sight. But it's short-sighted. I think that's what you call it. When you can see closer. What do you call that? Near sight. And some of us are so near sighted, the only thing we can see is our own reflection in our hand. No spiritual wisdom, no spiritual insight, no spiritual discernment. Satan will eat us alive with the openings that we give him. I go back to what I said last week about the millipedes. Every single opening that exists in our homes, the millipede is going to come through. Yet none were created for that. None of those openings were created for those millipedes. And Satan wants to defeat us. He wants to keep us tripped up. He wants to keep us bothered. He wants to keep us focused on the things that really aren't of great significance. And just like the coach who was interviewed, his point was they had a weakness, they didn't fix it, they ran the same play every time and they couldn't stop us. And I believe this morning Satan has been running the same play with some of us since day one. We've not made a change. Let me give you the flip side. We have a coach called Jesus. He's on the side. And he is sending in the players. He could fix your weakness. Because he wants you to defend your position. He doesn't want us constantly defeated. We have to listen to that Jesus. We have to listen to that Jesus. And I'm going to make a statement that you would agree to academically, but I don't know if it's transformational for all of us. You realize that the believer was never meant to be defeated? Amen. See, some of you don't believe that. That's a bit far-fetched to me. It was never God's design for us to be defeated. Thank you, Lord. In anything. When we came to Christ, we came to the source to be equipped to handle every situation. Yeah. Let me explain what not defeated means. It doesn't mean it will all go your way, but you won't perish in the process. Yeah. When I say perish, I don't mean like hell kind of perish. I'm talking about you having the, the ill side of all of that. That was never God's plan. And most of us don't understand what it is to walk in victory. We don't understand what it is to live a victorious life without looking for the positive results in every situation. In other words, the positive outcome according to our agenda. Yeah. 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 So Christians were never meant to be defeated. Amen. Now, the society may ostracize us, but that's not defeat. Someone may persecute you, but that's not defeat. We were meant to be victorious from the inside out. Let this mind be in you. We were meant to manage our spirit. So it won't interfere with the spirit of God working in us. God has equipped us with that. We were meant to manage our minds so that we could think appropriately. And not give place to the devil. Nowhere in the scriptures is it even indicated that a believer is supposed to be defeated. Now, you may not get the job you applied for. That's not defeat. You may not get the loan you applied for. That is not defeat. See, we count defeat in the wrong way. You may not get whatever it is you're pursuing, but that's not an indication of defeat. My question is, what's the inside like? Are you able to sleep? Are you able to still give God thanks? Even in the midst of what we call failure? The Christian was never designed to be defeated. Praise the Lord. 
And I want to challenge you this morning. Satan wants us to believe that we are powerless. We are not powerless. Amen. Amen. Come on, Pastor. And we need to rise up and say to that weak spot in our game, get out of the way. I, I will no longer allow my oversensitivity to interfere with me and my Jesus. I will no longer allow my fears to interfere with me and my Jesus. I will no longer allow my unbridled desires to rule me. It's going to be my Jesus. And that's what we need this morning. Can I be honest with you? I think we've all got a weak game. A weakness in our game. Now, are we man and woman enough to recognize that weakness? And are we man and woman enough to put it at the feet of Jesus this morning through a verbal confession? And I'm saying literally, Lord Jesus, I'm putting at your feet this morning my weakness in my game. And I, I repent of all that I've done that was wrong because of my weakness. And I come to you for cleansing in mind, body, soul, and spirit. So that I could live this victorious life in your eyes that you've ordained for me to live. Are you bold enough to have that kind of conversation with Jesus? And then commit and recommit some things to Christ this morning. That's what this is about. That's what it's about. Satan wants to crush us. When God has already exalted us. But we're living with the wrong set of game plans.